I'm grateful to Great Britain and personally to Prime Minister Boris Johnson for uh, his leadership. I'm grateful to every country who has taken a moral stance um, <clears throat> against Russian uh, war machine. We can still stop Russian war machine. We can stop, uh, still stop the killing of people, and it will be easier to do it together, stopping the destruction of the democracy and stop it now on our land, because else they will also come to you. I can, I can see everyone on, on the picture, but I can see next to Boris uh, Kitanis, and um, he knows very well, and he's helping us like many other countries around this table, but he knows for sure how um, that, that if we don't stand, how they will come to Latvia and Estonia and other Baltic republics. I'm sure that all Baltic republics are there in Poland. We all know these risks, and Finland remembers very well what happened. Uh, yeah, Volodymyr, that, uh, you know, you've challenged us quite rightly uh, to do more, and we all know that we can and we must do more, and uh, we've been discussing it uh, last night and this morning. We are, uh, I hear your points very loud and clear about the economic uh, sanctions that we need to, uh, to tighten, where we need to go harder on the banks, on SWIFT, uh, and I think that you're completely right in, in what you say. And then when you talk about uh, trying to protect Ukraine from the air, Vladimir, who can listen to your appeals uh, without uh, a sense of urgency? And uh, who, this is a desperate, desperate moment. And I think we must try to do more, particularly uh, to, su to support you in protecting the Ukrainian people from, uh, from uh, bombardment by, uh, by artillery and, and uh, by aviation. I think Russian invasion has destroyed every, all the security infrastructure and international infrastructure. Yeah. The way of the organization that we all relied on and international con conventions were undermined and the strongest, uh, strongest uh, um, uh, alliance in the world, NATO, which seems or some of the members of these alliance are hypnotized by Russian aggression. We hear a lot of conversations about the Third World War that allegedly it could start if NATO will close the Ukrainian sky for Russian missiles and planes and therefore the humanitarian no-fly zone was not yet established. That allows Russian army to bombard uh, peaceful cities and uh, blow up uh, housing blocks and hospitals. want to uh, tempt fate but clearly the negotiations about uh, all our difficult uh, consular cases have been going on uh, for a long time and really I think it would not be sensible for me to, to comment until uh, we've, we've, we've got a final result and I think that uh, conversations are still going on. Um, are we about to or have we paid off the £400 million historic debt uh, or written off the historic debt to Iran? Is any of this issue on your conscience? I think that it's very important when you've got uh, quite delicate uh, discussions going on, negotiations going on uh, in Tehran about uh, some of our most difficult consular cases, particularly Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe, uh, that you know, we should say as little as possible until, uh, and, and less than until uh, the thing is actually concluded. And everybody wants uh, Nazanin home. Uh, uh, we've been working on that for a long, long time. I do not want to uh, do, do anything to, to interrupt the conversations right now. Um, you're heading to Saudi Arabia to see uh, Mohammed bin Salman. You're famously close to him. You text him, you chat with him. You're much closer to him than the Biden administration. What, what do you want from him and the Saudi Arabian government? And, and do you hope he will listen? I think that we've got a global crisis in which it's obvious that uh, the Russian aggression in Ukraine has helped to trigger a spike in the price of hydrocarbons, a spike in the price of oil. And it is vital uh, if we're going to stand up to Putin's bullying, if we're going to avoid being blackmailed by Putin in the way that so many Western countries sadly have been, uh, we've got to get ourselves off Russian hydrocarbons. They're a massive part of the global market for hydrocarbons. They help 
to drive the price. Uh, we need to talk to other producers around the world about how we can move away from that dependency. Vladimir Putin over the last uh, years has been like a, a pusher uh, feeding an addiction uh, in uh, Western countries to his hydrocarbons, uh, to his oil and gas. Uh, we need to, to get ourselves off uh, that addiction. Um, Saudi Arabia have just executed 81 people at the weekend. Um, alongside that, you've got U.S. intelligence that suggests that MBS, the person that you're going to see, was uh, behind the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Iran may be having historic debts written off. It's quite a good time to be a repressive regime right now, isn't it? I think that what the world is seeing is the uh, return in Ukraine to the kind of brutality, the kind of uh, absolutely indiscriminate bombing of uh, civilian centres of uh, great cities that we last saw in the European continent 80 years ago. Uh, this is quite unbelievable what is happening now in, uh, in our continent. And uh, we need to make sure that we build the strongest, widest possible uh, coalition uh, to ensure that Vladimir Putin does not succeed, that we wean ourselves off uh, Russian hydrocarbons, and that's what the UK is, is helping to do. But a coalition with other unpleasant regimes, Prime Minister? Well, th those are your words, uh, Sam. What we want to do is build the widest You'll possible... You'll that Iran and we Saudi Arabia build... are not a, a, we want a, a build... unpleasant regimes. No, I didn't say that. But we want to, we want to build the widest possible uh, coalition uh, to ensure that uh, we, we focus on what is happening in uh, Ukraine, the effect that that is, happening, uh, that is having on the price of oil and gas. There's, there's no question at all that the, the spike in oil and gas, which is being felt by British consumers, by everybody who uh, has a, uh, a central heating system, everybody in this country is seeing the effects of, uh, of that, that spike in, in prices. We have to deal with that in any way that we can. Uh, and, and what we need to do is build long-term security of energy supply in this country. That's what we're doing. We're setting out a strategy uh, for long-term energy security in the UK. But part of that uh, in the short term is, is making sure that we are not as dependent in the West as we currently are on Russian oil and gas. The UK is fortunate in that uh, we only take 3% of our, of our gas uh, from Russia. A lot more of our diesel comes from Russia. We're going to have to make sure that other producers are, are, are doing what they can. And we're going to have to help the whole world to move forward uh, with greener solutions, with green technology, so that ultimately uh, we're not dependent on, on Vladimir Putin. And uh, it's an absolutely crucial thing. If we're not going to be blackmailed by Putin, we have to take these steps. But, Prime Minister, the Treasury is making huge sums, billions in VAT receipts from higher petrol and diesel prices. In France, they're putting $2.2 billion into a fuel rebate uh, to cut 15 euro cents off the price of a litre. Do you think something like that could work here? We've frozen fuel, fuel duty for about uh, 12 years already, uh, Sam, and uh, I think we've put about £21 billion pounds so far into supporting uh, people through the, through the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, price spikes that we're seeing, and uh, £9.1 billion pounds going alone just to, to helping people with their, en their energy costs. But long term uh, and medium term, what you've got to do is ensure that we have greater security of supply here in the UK, that we take back control of our, of our energy supplies, we make sure we don't uh, abandon our own hydrocarbons here in the UK, but also uh, double down on wind power, double down on solar, and, and help the whole world to be less dependent on Putin's hydrocarbons. Uh, and that can be achieved. And listen to what all the other European countries are now saying. Three weeks ago, they wouldn't have said that was possible. Uh, a month ago, before the invasion, everybody was saying, oh, no, we'll, ne we'll never be able to do it. Now, after what Putin has done in Ukraine, you're seeing European colleagues step up to the plate and say, right, this is the time we've got to learn our lesson as the West. We've got to end that dependency on Russian hydrocarbons. And that's one of the reasons I'm going out to the Gulf.